Let's fork the MicroPython repository so that we can create a REPL to print Hello World using uh, QEMU and RISC-V 32. I'm going to fork this to my repo. And now I'm going to go to my machine and I'm going to clone my repo down locally. Let's open up Visual Studio Code now in the MicroPython directory. So in order to implement this REPL, there are porting instructions that are listed on the MicroPython website. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create the files according to the instructions that are given. And I'm going to create a directory, first of all, for the port. Note that there is also a port for RISC-V out there already. However, it does not implement the REPL. So I'm going to go ahead and do that by just calling this uh, RISC-V REPL. So I'm going to copy each one of these files. This first one's going to be main.c. And it's going to create a file in the new port called main.c and just paste it in here. And I'm just going to go and do the rest of these files. The next, this next one here is the, the make file. And you know, normally I've done this stuff from scratch in the past, but there's really no reason to because these instructions are already here. I just want to kind of start from the base of what MicroPython says, and then I'm going to modify this as we go. All right, so now the um, config port. So there's some configuration parameters that you can give to the build process, and uh, they've already, you know, to, to implement a basic REPL, they've already implemented them for you here. So I'm just going to, again, cut and paste these. And then the how, the hardware uh, abstract layer, has got one little line in here. And again, I'm not going to explain what it is. I'm just going to take it and use it. And then there's uh, some more how. So that was the header file for the how. This is the implementation for the HAL, and there's some more functions in here that are in the header, and I think these functions are already predefined somewhere else, but you have to provide an implementation for them as part of the port. And I think these are dealing with the yeah standard in, standard out. And again, we're, we're using a UART, not um, standard C library, so we'll have to come back and modify these later. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make the project and um, oh well yeah I need to need to actually be in the directory that I just created in order to make it so we'll go there and now we'll do a make and this happens if you don't have your tabs right in your make file and since I copy pasted the stuff over more than likely these lines are probably spaced and not tabbed so let's fix that Let's try again now. Um, I got more of them somewhere. I guess the one, the line below, lines below here. Yeah, right here. I didn't, I didn't do those. So let's fix those. And let's try it again. Okay, and it is making. Now note that this build is being done in the context of my native CPU architecture. I'm running on Mac OS. Uh, I've got uh, x86. So the REPL that we're building here is actually just going to be a native Mac OS REPL, if you will. It's not going to be RISC-32 because the make file hasn't been uh, altered in order to, you know, cross compile. And of course, there's no run target that's in the make file. So I'm just going to go directly into the build directory and uh, just run the, the, the firmware file. And you can see that we have a REPL 
um, command prompt. So let's put a little Python statement in here to print hello worlds. Okay, let's break out of here and let's go into the other make file from the original RISC-V project that's out there since they have a lot of this figured out and let's borrow. We're going to we're going to cross compile set up cross compilation for this project, our own project. All we have to do is just put this flag in here. And I'm going to make verbose now, and uh, the, the V equals 1 does a verbose compilation, and so we can actually see all of the compile steps. It's kind of hard to see as the fly by here, but they all begin with risk 564 unknown, blah, 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 GCC. So I, it, as opposed to just starting with GCC, which would compile for my native processor locally, it's, it's, we know that it's now cross-compiling. But we have a few errors. And so architecture not supported errors. So uh, I know right away that we just don't have the right flags to tell it what architecture to compile for. So again, let's go back up in the make file, the other make file, and find out where this author is setting these flags. And you can kind of see them here. This, uh, you know, uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to split the two make files apart because I'm going to be copying some code. So let's go back and um, take some of these things. In order to make this code work, we needed the GCC version. And then here's all the code that actually makes the flags work. And we can see the RISC32, Arch, and so forth flags. So I'm going to grab all that stuff, and I'm going to pull it over to the project that we're trying to build. One of the uh, things that I noticed that we're missing after copying this over is the vert ld the linker script so let's go ahead and grab that file as well let's make this now again see what happens okay we have some symbols that are Oh, I see. So we have a C runtime trying to be linked in here. Yeah. So we need um, to, to not do that. And so there's a flag that we can put in here uh, dealing with start files. So let's create a variable called bare metal because we're, we don't this is bare metal. We're not doing any runtime, no nothing related to an operating system or anything. We're just going to start bare metal. So that's no start files. And then to our C flags, let's add bare metal. And then let's make sure the linker has it too. So I'm going to add it to the linker flags, the LD flags variable. Okay, and let's try this again. Okay, it built. Okay, so now we need to, I mean, we're not gonna run it because there's, there's no reason, there's no point because we haven't done anything with the UART. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go copy some code from a prior project. And again, the uh, card will be up on the upper right if you haven't seen this, where um, I started interacting with the UART. So I'm going to copy this code from that project. And I'm going to stick it into the HAL, the hardware abstraction layer port code, where it was actually reading and writing to standard in and standard out. I'm going to massage this a little bit. I'm going to move these defines up here to the top. They probably need to go in a header file, but I'll just put them here for now. And um, I need to reconcile the the TX and the RX uh, functions that were in here. Um, we're gonna basically just route instead of instead of reading and writing from standard in and standard out. I'm gonna delete those, and I'm gonna create my own functions using 
my uh, UART. Let's go grab the run target from the other make file and copy it into our current project here so we can run this whole thing. And I'm going to take out this semi-hosting flag, and I'm not going to explain why at this point. We're going to come back to it, but we don't need it right now. So let's run the make, and let's run this whole thing now. And so we have a hang. And that's not good. And why is it not running? So let's set up the debugger. I'm going to go grab the debug target from the other make file as well. And I'm going to paste that target in here. And I'm going to take the semi-hosting flag out of this one as well. We don't need it right now. So we're going to need to flip the G flag on the compiler. And I know that there's some code in this make file, so I'm going to grab it where this author sets this up. I don't really like what he's doing here, but I'm just going to steal it because you have to pass the debug flag on the make in order to actually turn this on, which is, I don't know, kind of annoying, but that's okay. Copy and rob for now. So I'm going to paste it in here. And then the C ops has to be uh, included in the C flags. Because the C opt in this case sets an optimization of zero for debugging, which makes sense. So let's make this again now. Do a clean, make sure everything, all the uh, old non debug object files are cleaned out. So now we're going to make it with the debug flag turned on. So you have to say debug equals one, I think. Okay, so it, it made, that's good. So let's run the debugger. So now we're gonna pay, make run debug. And now we're, yeah, so now we're, we're sitting there waiting for GDB to attach. So let's go to another terminal. And let's um, try to run GDB. So we need to say target remote and then give the TCP port that it's running on. And okay, so we read the symbols, that's good. Let's try to do a break on um, 8000000, that should be the breakpoint. And yeah, for nlr.c, that's like the beginning of MicroPython. That's not the beginning of our main. That's not the beginning of our of our start function, nothing. So that's that's definitely starting in the wrong place. So let's break out of here. And one thing that I recognize now is that we didn't bring in the entry point of this whole thing, which, you know, sets the stack pointer and clears the BSS and sets up the stack and all that stuff. So, um, and again, I covered this in my prior video. I'll put the card up at the top of what you kind of have to do when you enter into bare metal. So we're going to tell the assembler that we need to assemble this entry point file
And then we need to set up uh, a, an object, the, the object variable to pick this up as well. So to pick up the .s files. So this needs to be a source of sim, and then uh, we're looking for .s files. And let's try to make this again. I'm going to pass the debug flag. And we have an undefined reference to entry point. And so, um, yeah, entry point is actually now in our uh, entry point. So we need to define entry point in our main .c function. So I'm going to go steal the one again from the other project because this is going to init our UART and it's actually going to call to main. So I'm going to stick this in here into the our project's main.c somewhere. Uh, I'm not sure where. I will stick it at the top, I guess, for now. And um, this exit function, we're going to come back to it in a minute. Uh, we don't need this interrupt because I haven't set up. I'm not going to set up interrupts here. And I'm not going to set up this exit function. I'm going to get rid of it. And I'm, uh, I think we're just going to spin here. So I'm going to just put in a while statement and uh, spin forever if, if uh, main happens to be left. So let's make this again. And I probably have things out of order because I didn't forward declare things. So let me let me put this stuff in the right order. And my UART init, uh, you know. Uh, I didn't make header files out of my UART stuff, so because UART and it's going to be called from main. So uh, let's create some UART definitions. Uh, basically, split this HAL apart, and I'll put the UART related stuff into a header file and a UART.c implementation file. So I'll go back to the HAL. Uh, yeah, to the HAL port file, and I'll take these defines and I'll put them over into header file, which I should have done in the first place. And I need to define the put C function as well. So I'll take that over and I'll slap that into uart.h. And I, yeah, and I, sh I should have not stolen the put C function that needs to go into the implementation file of the uart. And then we need to make um, put C into a declaration. And then, yeah, I need to define, so put C is now in the declaration. This needs to be, a, there needs to be a header included in here to, to declare the function. And uh, this needs to go also a declaration for the header needs to go into the uh, HAL in order to um, pick up the reference to put C, which is in this the TX the TX SGRN function. And then this init needs to go into my UART.C to set up the red the FIFO register. And then I need a declaration for the init in the header file. So few gyrations to kind of straighten this out. Okay, and I think I also need to declare the UART. Yeah, that looks right. So I need to declare the UART in main.c now because we're, we're calling the init from here. Okay, I think perhaps that should straighten that out. Let's build this again. Um, 
why is this yet again? Oh, because I didn't. So now my uart.c is not being compiled. So let's add that in here as well. One more time. Oh, there we go. And it built. So let's let's debug this thing now. And let's try to attach Okay, it attached. So let's set a breakpoint. So I'll set a breakpoint to start, which should be the very, very beginning line. And okay, but it's not referencing my S file. Why is that? And it's giving me the source from the C file, it's not showing me the source from the entry entry point.s file. Something is still not right. It looks like my start symbol is defined, so maybe the code's included, but the source is actually not in the file. So I got my G flag. Okay, so I've got my G flag for the compiler, but not for the assembler. So let me let me add the G flag for the assembler as well. So let's make this again. I'll, I'll do a verbose so we can check the, the assembler line and make sure that minus G is being sent through. So let's scroll up here and see if we can find these. Yeah, see the assembler is right there at the end, and there is the G flag. Okay, so now I know that um, symbols are being compiled in. So let's do this whole thing again. We're going to make debug, and we're going to run this again. Okay, so this, is, this looks good. So let's break, set a breakpoint for start again. It still doesn't look right. It should say entry point.s. Yeah, it still didn't include the symbols for the assembler code. So I went offline and I couldn't quite figure this out. I knew this had to be something to do with the fact that my entry point assembler code was not labeled as text. The section for it is defined as start, I think. And so, um, I knew that there had to be something related to the fact that the assembler uh, would normally see the G flag and everything marked as text. It would, um, you know, output the symbols for that. But because my section wasn't labeled text, it didn't know to do that. And I was like, you know, there's got to be an easy way to just tell the assembler that your that your text is code. But I Googled for an hour and I I couldn't figure it out. So I finally did what I should have done in the first place, and I asked chat GPT. So I asked it, I have some RISC-V assembler code that I'm cross-compiling. Code's labeled with the section directive and the section's name start. I specify the G flag to produce debug symbols. However, none seem to be admitted in the O file. I suspect it's because the code is marked as text. And it of course, gave me the exact right answer. Said lack of debug symbols, maybe the fact that it's not recognized as a code section. So here's the first thing it says to do. Use the section directive with appropriate flags. The code section, you should include the AX flags to indicate that the section contains allocatable and executable code. So there it is right there after an hour of banging my head. Just ask ChatGPT. It's it. I mean, this technology is amazing, really. You can just sort of ask it the question and get the answer. It gives you a little inf info. Make sure you specify the G flag, and then make sure you don't strip stuff out, which I wasn't doing, so that's fine. So let's go back to the code, and I'm just going to add the AX flags. 
put a little comment in here to remind myself later because I know I'll forget. There's probably a way to do it in the linker definition as well, I guess. Okay, so let's make this again. Okay, and built, let's run this thing. Okay, it's waiting for attach. Let's go over here and run the debugger. Here we go. Okay, reading, reading symbols. Stopped at 1000, which is right, because that's where the very, very beginning of QEMU comes into. Oh, wow, look at this. Stopped at entry point dot s line thirty seven. Holy cow! And then there's the first line where we're rigging up the global pointer. And yeah, if we do a listing, there's all my assembly. Great. So let's continue and flip over, and we see now a REPL with the wrong board definition, but that's probably because of the way I've got, yeah, I've got these strings set up here. We can change those later. But let's do some Python-y stuff. Now remember, this is running under uh, QEMU, uh, RISC, 30, uh, RISC 532, and if we print one and one, we get two. Let's print hello world. We should get the string. And we do, this seems to be working. Let's do some Pyth some better Python-y stuff. Let's define a class. And uh, we'll send an, in an init with uh, a string to speak. So let's set our utterance instance variable. And then let's create a method to actually say the utterance. We'll just print it. I just want a little bit more Python-y looking stuff so that we can know that this truly is Python REPL. So let's create ourselves an instance variable called speak. And then say it, we'll say hello world. And then we shall call speak now and we should see hello world. And we do. So that concludes the video. We have actually produced a, well, you know what? Um, hang on a second. Oh, I don't, well, we're not done because if I try to exit, I get a hang. And that's because this is spinning. Remember I was talking about semi-hosting before and uh, the exit function and so forth. So let's um, let's fix that. First of all, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and define these strings that I that I mentioned were sort of out of whack. They don't really matter for anything, but let's just put a correct name in here to show what we're doing. And then let's deal with the fact that this won't exit properly. So there is a way for uh, communication to the host to occur from bare metal, which is kind of cool here. It's called semi-hosting. And I'm not going to explain it, but this assembler and this exit function is actually implementing the exit capability of the semi-hosting to be able to communicate to the host that, hey, I'm exiting and you need to exit. So let's go into the main function and let's copy paste this from the, from the original QEMU implementation that was in here. And then we need to call this exit function from our entry point. Remember, this was here before, but I blasted it. I'm going to put it back now. And in the description, I, I will leave a link to what semi-hosting is so that you can learn more about it. You know, 
it's kind of cool that, that your bare metal program can actually kind of interact with the host. But it's semi-hosting. It's not, it's not like an operating system interaction. It's basically just kind of certain functions like exit, for example. So you can tell the host, I'm exiting, you need to exit. And so the way to implement this for QEMU or to, or to bring it online, I guess, is to use this semi-hosting flag that sort of brings the stuff um, to bear within QEMU so that it's, it's listening. So let's make this again, and I'll, I'll run through a real quick example to see that when we leave the REPL, that the host terminates as well, a QEMU terminates. You know, if we were actually implementing this live on hardware without an operating system of any kind, you probably wouldn't do this, but, you know, maybe if you're using um, free RTOS with thread, you know, multi-threads and you had a supervisor or a monitor or something, maybe you would do this. Uh, of course, exit is out of order. Darn it, I didn't forward declare it. That's okay, let's just move it. We'll move it ahead of entry point. Yep, I think that should work. Yep, let's go down and build it now. Great, now built. Okay, let's run this. All right, there's our command prompt. Let's just uh, make sure this still works. Uh, let's just print something. Okay, yep, works. Now let's exit. Control D. And we exited QEMU. We are back to the command prompt. Video is concluded.